Welcome to the second edition of Legal Affairs. I'm Stephen Yap. This time we will talk about the Ministry of Foreign Affairs fact sheet. Recently, the Chinese uh, Foreign Ministry issued a fact sheet listing five main facts with a total of 102 examples of US blatant interference in China's Hong Kong affairs since 2019. As a fierce response to the US warning of Hong Kong risks, the list came at a time when Hong Kong has just finished the election under the new system. In the Lawrence, the term freedom appeared 25 times while um, human rights appeared 15 times in the long list. The two key terms have been major excuses for the US to interfere in Hong Kong affairs. Now what's your take on the interventionism on the pretext of freedom and human rights? Well, the U.S. has always been putting American interests first. Um, they would topple regimes which is not complacent with their interests. Um, for example, in the past, what, 20, 20 years, they have been launching wars or levying wars on um, Middle East countries. Why? Because Henry Kissinger, when you control oil, you control nations. Oil is important for development for manufacturing all this um, and therefore Americans were very conscious about um, uh, controlling oil and Kuwait, Iraq, all these countries some of them attempted to u not use US dollars as their currencies in, in trading oil and that is not complacent to the, to the American interests so what they did is they have to find a way to overturn the uh, regime that is not complacent to the interest, so they want to levy war. That's the example of Iraq, that's the, that's the example of Saddam Hussein who's been, the government has been toppled. So uh, there is a US general before the Iraq war was levied, was wondering why we invade Iraq. And they have to find some reason, weapon of mass destruction is the reason they found. And then the general was saying, well, they can, since they can't find any concrete evidence of weapons of mass destruction, then he concluded that, well, if all you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So that, that's how they invaded Iraq and over top of the government. When time goes on and on, it, launching wars against a, a, a nation may not be too effective. For the three reasons for it. First, um, human casualty. If you send US troops to invade a place, they die. And there are a lot of American citizens who are not happy about their kids going to war and die. All right? The second reason is their um, uh, international oppositions. Because these Middle East countries would have trade relations with other Western countries. And if America was to invade them and seize control, they would lose also the contracts to all these foreign uh, Western nations. And they would op object to it. Thirdly is funding. To send a U.S. soldier overseas to fight, it will cost approximately a million dollar a year. So all this come together, it would not be a good way to topple regimes. So what they do is they launch color revolution. They use their internal opposition forces within a nation to internally overturn, overturn overthrow the government. What they did is they would um, train them. For example, occupying central, they would tell them how to put in their tents, how to communicate, how to supply electricity, occupying central movement. In the 2019 anti-extradition bill riots, they would give them cash, they would give them octopus card to buy things, they fund them. And they would protect them. How they protect them is they would give them visas if they have to flee Hong Kong, right? give them protection visas, treat them as asi political asylum seekers. They would also give them money to hire lawyers. 612 fund, we all know that. They would give them money so that they can hire a good lawyer, so that they can get out of jail, they can go away to protect them. And the lastly, to glorify them. To glorify them mm -hmm. is to put them on the front page of Times Magazine, to glorify them as a freedom fighter. And democracy then comes in. When you ask me the question, how democracy comes in, to glorify them, they put them on moral high grounds. They are freedom fighters, they are dem dem democratic fighters. They would bring in democracy, which is a virtue, uh, to the community. So that's how th the pretext of democracy plays in in all this color revolution.
Lawrence, the fact sheet is considered a warning to the US and probably US allies who attempt to interfere in China's internal affairs. Now, how effective is the warning? What are some other messages to the world behind this move? I think there are three things. First is China has this time set the record straight. This fact sheet covers two and a half years of events. It put things in black and white summarizing all, all of them. So it sets the basis for any future actions or sanctions. That's one first thing. The second thing, it, it alerts international communities that if you stand in Americans' way, um, that, will, that will going to happen to you. A color revolution will be coming along. And the third, third most important thing is to warn American, America and West, Western powers that the insidious plot of color revolution will not go unnoticed. There are one third of all the nations in the world issuing a statement condemning them. That means one third of nations in the world are aware of them. And many of them are developing countries, which are the most susceptible nations for a color revolution. So China has this time alerted the whole world about color visions. So this statement is a very important international message to the whole world that beware, we have to stand up against foreign intervention. Uh, thank you, Lawrence. That's very enlightening. Um, now, th uh, that is the program for today. Um, thank you for watching Legal Affairs. See you next time. Thank you.